Welcome to Podcast Marketing Secrets, the place for entrepreneurs, coaches, and CEOs who are looking to grow their business with a podcast, become a key person of influence in their industry, and get their ideal clients to come to them, also known as Attraction Marketing. I'm your host, Al Morenton. My guest today is Dustin Bogle. Dustin is a sales expert that helps businesses to harvest more sales from their leads using his fortune follow-up system. He has a sales system that doesn't make you feel like a slimy salesperson and shows you how to come from a place of serving. Dustin has been an entrepreneur for 15 years, helping his clients to solve their sales problems once and for all. Welcome to the show, Dustin. Thanks. I'm super excited to be here, Al. And I think I'm among uh, my people because uh, just by you calling out what we talk about here, marketing, the, the, I'm, I'm at home, man. So let's, let's do this. Awesome. Yeah. And, and, uh, um, so yeah, that, that being said, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and what led you uh, to where you are today? Yeah. Uh, the, the quick and dirty version that's kind of fun to tell is in high school, I actually was a pro wrestler. And so I'm not talking college level wrestling. I'm talking Hulk Hogan, baby oil, elbow drops, <laughs> And, uh, and so I was a personal trainer for work. And then on the weekends, I was a wrestler with the character of being a pro, a pro, or sorry, a personal trainer. So I would throw protein powder in my opponent's eyes. I would choke <laughs> them with distance bands. I'd clobber them with dumbbells. And that was my shtick. And so I did it for 10 years. And wow. I always had this deadline on myself that if I don't get a big contract from Vince McMahon or one of the big people in the industry by the age 28, that I'm going to walk away. And so that age came around, I hit 28 and I asked myself, well, what else am I passionate about? And it always came back to fitness. It, it, it's like, I changed my mind from wanting to have the championship, the championship belt around my waist. And I liked putting it on other people instead, which was when they lost weight, when, when they got healthy, when they reclaimed their confidence. And I was like, man, I'm going to just change my focus to just like other people because in wrestling you got to play the politics you got to schmooze the promoter you got to try to get all the wins and victories so you can be the champion and get the big paydays and so it is a very me focused business which you kind of got to be in the entertainment industry and I, I just I like serving other people and so that's what I went all in on and over a course of uh you know couple years went into uh, opening my first gym and then back to back opened six gyms in six years and uh, it was lightning fast, too fast. I'm the first to admit it. And uh, ended up selling locations uh, just recently post COVID. I think a lot of us had to reframe what our priorities are and decided I wanted to have less of brick and mortar footprint and get more into online businesses. And so launched a B2B service for gym owners where we basically put in sales reps to do their lead nurture and we run their digital marketing as well. So from high school to today, that's the quick version. <laughs> that's awesome. That, that, that that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's cool that you came from a that that wrestling background because you um, definitely get to see the, the the politics involved, you know, in in, mm -hmm. in a lot of things. But also, there's there's some pretty awesome marketing that goes on behind with, with the pro wrestling too, isn't there? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I know both of our ties come from Southern California. And so it's a heavy Hispanic uh, kind of area. It's right by Mexico. And so I actually went and did a lot of Lucha Libre shows. You go to other parts of the United States, they don't have a lot of Lucha Libre. And there are these guys with the masks and they're doing mm -hmm. all these crazy stunts. Well, what I learned marketing wise was I needed to stand out because that's what decides if the crowd's going to boo or cheer you. So you need a really unique character. And that's why I came up with that like personal trainer bad guy. And I mean, I had people throwing battery at me and, uh, you know, cans of yellow liquid that I thought was beer and it smelled like something else. And, you know, like all kinds of random stuff when they hate you. And so it made me get comfortable with this this feeling of hatred because, you know, what probably most people get it is is in social media. It's not having things thrown at you in the ring. It's having words thrown at you at Facebook and Instagram. So that doesn't affect me like it does most people. I've learned to deflect because I stood in a ring with 8,000 people booing me and, and, and hissing and throwing things at me. So it's like, what could any keyboard warrior do to me to kind of like hurt me, right? So like that was like lesson number one in wrestling. 
Number two, I definitely built my hustle muscle. And in today's world, we are like lazy marketers. We're so dependent on Facebook ads and Google ads and their helpful tools. But so many people lost the art of getting outside their house and just shaking hands with people and doing like we're doing here, connecting with new people, new faces. And one of the first things I did to grow our ticket sales with our pro wrestling shows was I went to local businesses and I said, hey, we'll put your logo on the side of the banner on the side of the ring apron if you pay for the apron, you know, or sorry, you pay for the banner, you know, it was like $800. And I was just closing one deal after the other. And I was like, Oh, my God, this is cool. Like local businesses want to invest in local community uh, companies. And just by going in and asking most people wouldn't walk into a smoothie shop or a subway or you know, a law office and say, will you sponsor us? And they were quick to do it. They want to invest in the community, they want to give back their profitable business. And so I just learned to sell and it was just the, the passion came out for me. I would tell them about how exciting these shows are and their logo is going to be on the side of the ring and they could feel that. And I didn't know what that word was. Like, I didn't know I was selling. I thought I was literally walking in and just getting sponsorships and telling people about our exciting wrestling show. It was years later when I learned the business terms that I, what I was doing. So sometimes you just got to do it's messy. You don't even know what you're doing, but you're just doing it. And the passion and energy that comes out of you, people feel it and they want to be around you. And so that's the the final lesson I'd learned is that if you got a big vision, you're going to attract people into your into your into that vision. And that's what I did with those businesses. Later on, I learned how to recruit talent and team members and how to again verbalize it like vision. Like I didn't know what it was. I just knew I wanted to fill a building with 300 bodies and sell tickets. I didn't I didn't know what you'd call that till I learned those terms down the road. So lots of lessons, but those are a few out off the top of my head. That's awesome. That's 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 really cool. You sort of reminded me of uh, one of my friends. He's he's like a professional salesman, basically. You know, and, and ever since we were young, as only thing is marketing and sales. And he went into a place for, for selling pitney bows way back in the day, and yes. they they were like says and he says there's a sign out here that says no soliciting. He's like. I'm not soliciting. I'm just trying to help you out. You know, yes, I love it. <laughs> but yeah, so but um, like you said, you saying you didn't know what you were doing going into those businesses, you know, and then you found the terms for it later. That's awesome, and it is really cool to see how uh, local businesses do want to support, you know, the other other local businesses and and community events, etc. That's awesome. So how did you transition from there and you you uh, turned 28 years old and then you went into the gyms? Yeah. I mean, to be in, in pro wrestling, I mean, a lot of people see they're big, thick guys. So I got into it in the beginning. Like, I mean, my first time in the gym, I was 18 years old and I did get a pretty big transformation. I mean, I lost 60 pounds of body fat. I was a pretty hefty kid. I was just sitting around watching wrestling and eating junk food and playing video games, you know, just standard sedentary lifestyle. And when I got to the gym, it just started melting. And I really implore people, man, the best time you get in the gym is like from 17 to 24. You're just, your hormones are raging. You're just going to build muscle like a beast. You're going to burn fat. And it's just a great time to just reshape your body doesn't mean it's, it's impossible later on it's just that's prime time with your hormones and then uh you know I, I had to get in shape for wrestling but one of the things that people always commented on was like man you got fit I saw your transformation can you train me and it was this really organic way that I just got business and I and I built you know just a client and a following where wrestling I felt like I was fighting uphill I was begging people to book me I was trying so hard I was like sending tapes I remember I went to the office the the uh, post office one day and I sent out 20 tapes I didn't get a reply from anybody and it was just like this heartbreaking hard work which you know all businesses have but then there was this one that was just coming so easy to me and it was almost like God was trying to tell me what to do but I was ignoring it and I was trying to like be stubborn and do what I wanted to do what I thought my vision for my life was and when I went down this, it was just so smooth and easy. I was just like, why didn't I start this sooner, right? And so again, we all have different things we wish we can go back and change. But when I did, door after door, as you heard, six gyms in six years, just things started flooding, opportunities started coming my way, and things just started going, you know, in a much faster, speedier path. And that was almost like re reaffirming to me, this is what I was meant to do. This is where I was supposed to make an impact, it was on the health and fitness of our communities and our country. That's awesome. Yeah. And 
That's one of the cool things about working in the fitness and wellness industry is, is that that when you do help people and and get mm -hmm. life those life changing results and sometimes you know with any business that you're in you know you go through ups and downs and sometimes you're like why am I doing this you know and and then that person says thank you so much for what you did for me you know you you, you, you changed my whole life you know and I got my life back or whatever it is and you're like that's why I do this you know like so that that that's really cool did you develop like your own like systems for uh like getting leads or sales or something like that when, when you were at your gym yeah yeah in fact that's why I went back to back to back opening a gym a year because I found this really awesome way to pack out my gym from day one and be profitable. And it was using digital marketing. It was Facebook and I would run ads and it was like the heyday of, you know, ads 2012, like there's no competition uh -huh. you know, for a buck. And I'm just packing these places out with 200 plus members on day one. We're profitable. And I'm like, you guys got this, you know, talking to the coaches. I'm on to the next town. We're going to repeat this. It's always going to be like this. And that was a lesson I had to learn the hard way is like what your experience, like er everything has a timestamp, like everything has an end date. Um, you know, your, your best days are followed by your worst days and your worst days are followed by your best days. And so um, everything works until it stops working. And so there's a joke again, marketers will get this, but they say, uh, everything's awesome until marketers get their hands on it. And so, you know, that means Facebook and, you know, like what happened with Bitcoin and just like, you know, uh, the, the stocks, it's like somebody had to go out and market it and make a product and take advantage and then burn people. And then it all comes crashing down and then they move to the next place and they do it again, but there's ethical marketers. And that's what I was doing. I was getting people into a gym, I was making their life better. But as you know, cost per lead goes up, privacy changes happen, you know, like all they say. And then like, my ads didn't perform the same and I was a one trick pony. And that's where I had to really get my, my marketing skills dialed in because what do you do when the thing you depended on, the thing that fed your gyms or your business is now not performing like it used to. And now you gotta get more skilled. You gotta level up, you gotta learn new platforms. You gotta learn how to improve it and how to optimize it. So definitely learned you know, a, a marketing system. And then in the gyms, I brought in the storytelling we do in wrestling into the workout experience. So first thing I did was teach all the coaches, hey, you need to have a persona. When you walk on the floor, you now entered the ring. You came in, you did your entrance, you had your outfit, your music, and this you know, firework show. So you walk on the floor, you're now coach so-and-so. What is your persona? Like, what do you want to be known as? Every wrestler, kind of pretty much like a brand, picks five words that they're known for. It's like Hulk Hogan, pythons, vitamins. You know, it's like Hulk. Like, he, it's really just five words they own. They don't own that many words, right? And so um, that that pretty much, you know, it's like Stone Cold, like redneck, beer, you know, like middle finger. Like, there are five things that they're known for. And so it's like, what do you, when you step on the floor, what are your five words? You get to decide that. You get to train it into our clients. And that's marketing too, is like saying the same thing over and over and training people what to come to you for, what I'm known as. And so that was like of the first thing that kind of chained our coaches into wrestlers. And then I said, the final part is we can't leave these people with just a workout and then they walk out the door and they go to their car we got to leave them on a high because one thing I learned about storytelling is everybody remembers the beginning and everyone remembers the end. And so they came in and there's this hot beginning, your entrance, loud music, the workout begins, the whole middle of the session, probably not going to be that memorable, but what are we going to leave them with at the end? And the one thing that we trained our team to do is to always end it with a story, a very motivational, inspiring story, something they heard on a podcast, something they read in a book, something they heard about a celebrity but like motivate me, inspire me, leave me with a really, you know, high. And then I will be thinking about that till I see you again the next day, because people remember things when they're, when they're physically moving. That's why Tony Robbins gets the whole audience moving. And then he teaches because when our blood is flowing, we actually are more susceptible to learn. That's why it's great to listen to podcasts like this or audiobooks when you're running, you're working out, you're actually going to receive studies have shown you're going to receive more of the information when there's blood flow Versus if you sit in a chair and you listen to a podcast and you're stagnant, it's not going to land the same. So I was like, guys, we got a great opportunity. They're, they're moving here. Their blood is flowing. And now whatever you say, it's going to land deeper because you are saying it at the right time, which is when there's blood flowing. So I taught the team, this is, you know, scientifically 
the best time to do it. And we even had clients, man, when I left, you were just ringing in my ears and I was mm -hmm. going to grab something. And my coach, I remember what they were saying at the end of the session, like, what the heck? It's like, you took over my mind. And it's just like, it works, you know? And so that was like the, the, the systems that made our locations stand out. And I think that's why we got to six locations in six years, because when we opened a gym, if anybody had friends and family from another town, we had a gym or got out, like you guys should be excited. That place is awesome. And they're going to take good care of you. And they're going to make your workouts an experience. It's not about sweat and calories burned. They're like you're walking into experience every time. So yeah, that, that's, that's kind of what we did. That's awesome. And that, uh, like this falls back on those two things, you know, the, the, the power of story, you know, and because you just hear that more and more, the more, the more like market uh, entrepreneurs and marketers I talk to and then providing an experience, you know, for people, you know, something that's memorable and then they, they actually want more of too, you know, they, they want to come back for it, you know, cause that, that's the one thing about it, Jim, the, the, the cool thing is the month of recurring revenue and all that kind of stuff. But they have to want to come back to, to your place and walk through the door like, you know, two or yeah. three times a week at least, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the hardest thing, man. I, I, You know, one of the things I give it up to anyone in the fitness industry, and you know this as well, is you are selling something people actually don't want. They don't want to be sweaty. They don't want to be sore. They don't want to sacrifice all their favorite food. You are like fighting people with this sell versus if I sold cookies or I sold concert tickets or I sold vacation packages, like, People want that. There's no rebuttals on price. People are just throwing it at you. And so part of the art of selling fitness is you got to change it from a need to a want to, that they want to come and work out. They they look forward to the results, but that like is much more difficult than like, they just want it from step one. You know, like, again, a lot of things that are like that quick dopamine rush, it tastes good. It feels good. It, you know, it sounds good. Like, so that's one of the hardest things that, you know, people who are like in any type of like, you really should versus I really want type of industry. Like you really should get your teeth clean. Like dentists, I feel for you. Gym owners, people in the fitness industry, I feel for you. Anything where you know people should do it, but they fight tooth and nail to spend money on. You really should get your car, you know, tuned up. These are all the should industries, much more difficult than the I want it, I got to have it industries, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Can you give an example of how you would do that? Yeah, I mean, the, the the number one thing you'll hear in sales all the time is getting to the root cause or peeling the onion. And it's because when you peel to the core of an onion, what does it do? It makes you cry. And so what is that saying in a sales setting? Like, I'm getting the person emotional. If we stay very logical, logically, it doesn't make sense that a trainer's, you know, 50 to $100 an hour. Logically, it doesn't make sense, you know, a, a six-week challenge is going to be $500 with us. But if there is a bigger why logic goes out the window and it's not that we want to pull the wools over people's eyes and take advantage of them we're actually charging an amount where we also want to command their attention because the more you pay the more you pay attention when you charge very little which is why planet fitness has an 80 percent no show rate every single day that none of their you know 80 percent of their members don't come in and use it because it's a very forgetful amount ten dollars a month doesn't hurt my pocketbook and i'm not paying attention to it but when you charge somebody, you know, for us, 200 to $400 a month, they are there three times a week. Why is that? They want to get their money's worth. They say, I paid all this money. I am definitely showing up. So what a lot of businesses understand, don't understand is that in service based industry, especially your pricing is a psychological part of the client experience. And if you price yourself too low, it's not that you know, you're going to get hit with thousands and thousands of people who won't be able to keep up with the orders. You're going to get hit with all the complainers and the low compliant clients. And you're going to be put through all these painful situations and problem solving you have to do. And when you charge more, you get compliant clients and you got people who don't throw a fuss and you got people that actually value what you do. And so that's another you know thing I help a lot of gym owners come to the realization is that, hey, you, you price low. Did you ever get flooded? Was your gym ever maxed out? Did you ever have that vision come to life that you thought would when you price low? No. So why don't we go the other direction? Why don't we get you high quality customers? They'll respect you. They'll respect your team because it's portrayed through the pricing. So number one, it's getting them emotional, asking those whys and getting below the logic, which is, hey, I wanted to come here because I want to lose 20 pounds. Okay. What is that, you know, actually going to do for your life? Well, I'll just feel better. Okay, we're still surface. What do you mean that's going to make your life better? 
well, my back's killing me and I can't play my kids and I feel like a failure as a dad every time I sit down and watch football and then they're playing without me. It's like, okay, we got to the tears, right? Maybe they don't actually tear up, but you know when you hear the statement that it punches you in the gut, you got to the core of the onion. And then secondly, is price accordingly because you can get someone super emotional and then you bring out a membership agreement for $10 a month. It's not going to make a big impact on their life, right? We got to follow it up with service and service is not cheap, especially good service providers cost, you know, a good amount. So we need to price appropriately so that we can bring on the best talent and we can bring on the best customers and then have a happy, you know, symbiotic relationship. Yeah, for sure. And it's a, it's a good point that you brought up as well is like um, a lot of people talk about like you need to raise your prices, you need to raise your prices and all all, all that for the a lot of the reasons you just mentioned, but they don't talk about raising raising the quality of their service, you know, and bringing in the right people and and doing the things that you should with that extra revenue, you, you know, that, that, that that's what it enables you to do. And that's what can enable your gym to be set apart from the tons of other gyms especially in california right <laughs> you know the competition yeah. they think if i charge a bunch and i can go hire some cheap labor that means more for me but what they don't do the math is like then this cheap labor is not very skilled or trained they burn your customers those customers never come back and sure there was a short-term you know gain but that leads to usually a long-term pain so it's like like you said bring in the right people and deliver the right service that you know should you know make your customers raving fans for years to come yeah for sure yeah yeah and that like i said you know like you said building that you know ex experience delivering experience building community and the people that um are in that higher bracket you know that, that will pay more you know they they don't complain as much like you said but they they'll, they'll keep on coming like you don't have to resell them every three months or whatever you don't, you don't have to talk about that, that they'll just keep on paying until you throw a kink in their armor you know you, you know if, if no feathers get ruffled they'll, they'll just keep on coming yeah absolutely do, do you work on retention that being said that like as well because i know you're really big with the sales side but do you what, what how do you feel about retention strategies yeah, it's funny. So it's kind of fuzzy in the background here, but it's my book, Reinforce Your Gym. I went over three main topics. It's marketing, sales, and then retention. And so the reason for that is because inside of the gym, and this is most service-based businesses, sales is problem number one. Like it's you, you can't breathe. It's oxygen. Like I need sales to feel some sort of relief. And so the owner's doing it. Eventually they recruit some awesome people to do it. And, and so now we solve problem A. But then you quickly realize like, why do we have all these sales, but we're not growing? Why are we stuck? Why are we the same monthly revenue? And it's because usually people are walking out the door at the same rate that you're bringing new people in, hopefully not faster because then we have a major problem. But usually we're, we're in, in fitness, we're trying to be between three to 5% is kind of a healthy attrition. And, and even the lower single digits, like those three percentages, two percentages, you're in the you know pretty high elite status. So that's what we want to strive for. Now, the work begins of what to be done to solve this because I have found attrition work is, is delayed. You don't see the actual results for three to six months while marketing and sales is very dopamine. I can get a new ad up and Facebook's giving me feedback and I'm making sales today. I can get really caught up in this dopamine. I'm like, oh man, this work over here, it's going to be three months till I see any numerical change. This is like dra draining. It's not as fun. I wish I could just sell a market all day, but you got to do it because you, you literally cannot outsell a retention problem. So like, you know, in studio places that are boot camps or personal training, CrossFit, things like that. Uh, the number one thing that I would say to attack is always attendance. Like what is your utilization percentage? How many members you have and how many came in this month? What's that percentage? And so we want to get that to be 90% plus because then it means a healthy amount of your membership is using it. We actually care. We're not like Planet Fitness because they want 80% to not come in. That means the equipment doesn't get used. That means they can you know, continue to pump up the monthly revenue and they don't care about results. They just care about revenue. Where studio is the opposite. Like we want you in. We don't feel good. We're taking your money if you're not coming in. So number one thing you can do is deploy a attendance accountability system, you know, and we usually see it in three layers. It's same day no shows. Like if I booked an 8 a.m. and I don't show up, 
did anybody notice? Did anybody message me? Or does it kind of just, you know, life continue on? No, you should get some sort of trigger. This Dustin booked at 8 a.m. He wasn't here. You, you text or you text or whoever you call him. Somebody has to be assigned. I am the AM coach and somebody is I'm the PM coach. And that doesn't mean just coaching sessions. That means holding people accountable who booked and no-showed. Number two would be people who've been missing longer than a week, you know, and so we would call that like an MIA client, like they've just been missing in action, where they've been, they haven't been here a week or 10 days or longer, we need to attack this, we need to call this person, we need to re-engage them, because this is going to become a slippery slope, before you know it, they're not there 20 days, they're not there 30 days, and then we have a cancellation request, and so it all started back here when they were gone seven days, they're basically starting the process of slipping into old bad habits, and we can get ahead of that. All right. And then the third and final layer is like we, we call them like at risk clients. This is someone who has not been in in 21 days. Like this is a cancellation coming just any minute now. And so you need to be uber urgent to get a hold of these people. The owner now it needs to need to get escalated to a high level manager and owner call video message, text them pigeon with a letter, uh, you know, like snail mail, like Every alert, 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 red alarm. This person is canceling. Somebody get a hold of them and let's get them back on track. And so those are the three layers that I would say would really help any location improve its attrition. And that's usually the big one that helps. I have more. You guys can catch them in the book, but that's the big one that I would say, you know, begins the domino of attrition being stronger. Right on. That's that's awesome. And uh, um as, as far as the the sales portion um or just with your company in general the 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 the, the uh, marketing or coaching company that you have yep. um, do, do you uh provide sales training or do you, or, or i think i read that you, you uh, actually do can do the sales for the the company as well the gym yep. can you explain that yeah, so we know in, in any kind of world, there's always it's good to have a done with you and a done for you kind of model. So done with you, we do have a sales course. You guys can go to my website, DustinBogle.com. Basically, it's a bunch of modules. And then, you know, it, it's uh, the, the starting ground for someone to learn how to sell fitness. And so that would be, you know, the done with you kind of scenario where it's like, I'm going to show you. We're going to we're going to role play and, you know, you can kind of cut your teeth in how to sell fitness done for you is what we do at gym reinforcements. We actually put a sales rep into your CRM and they do all your outbound and they receive all your inbound. And so it's text calls, emails, everything. It's not AI. It's not automation. It's an actual person. And so we want to basically work your database that you already have and work your new leads from your ads and move them into a trial program, a challenge, whatever it is you're selling. We want to be that bridge from marketing to membership. And so that's, you know, kind of the two options that we help gym owners with. Right on. And, and so, so you, and you, you do all the, the ad work and all that kind of stuff as well. Yep. yep. Marketing agency, run their ads, full, full process. Yep. Right on. And as far as like with a gym or, or, or any business that for that matter, um, at, do you feel that like the the founder uh, of the business should uh, know sales and be and be the initial salesperson, or is that something where you could start a business and just hire out to a company like yours from the get go? Like like maybe maybe a guy that's more systems based and not sales based. What, 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 yeah, that, that it's funny because I was going to bring up the the standard, it depends, you know, answer. That's the boring answer. But the more detailed answer would be, I'm a big fan of the disc profile. And so the very hard charging salespeople tend to fall in the D or I category. D is like typically business owners, dominant, results driven, sales. I is they're very people driven. They're outgoing. They're influencers. They They love spending time with people. They could be on the phone for hours. If they are D or an I and they open a gym, they can definitely sell and they probably could just go through our course and they'll rock it and they'll have a successful business. And at some point they might just want to get out of it. 
um, or or they just want to improve it. And so, you know, like that's pretty much where they whether they come to us. The S's and C's that, to your point, are more analytical people. They're a little bit more reserved. They don't. They're not going to be outgoing. They're not going to get on camera and do social media. They're not going to make a hundred outbound calls. They're a little bit more introverted, and they like to hide and you know do analytical work or organization. So that person opens a gym, they should start with us because no matter how hard they try, it's just like against their natural gifts. It is a major uphill battle for them to excel at sales. And so, um, you know, that that's the more elaborate answer to it depends. It depends on the owner's profile and their personality and what their natural strengths are. You want to hire your opposite so you can have a well-rounded team. But yeah, we've definitely helped gyms with their pre-sale and launching it and packing it out and running the same play I did in my six gyms. So I can absolutely help them with that. Right on. And uh, so, so you must have mastered the pre-sale. If, if you, if you, yeah, I mean that. I, I mean, I'm beyond my six. I've taught it to a hundred of owners. Um, you know, one owner in New York, for example, opened with three hundred plus, so he beat my record of new members. And so, yeah, it, it gets refined over time. I haven't opened a gym in a long time, but vicariously through other people, I've opened them and taught them the launch process. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, in you know, the modern times that we're in, you know, the 2023 going into 2024. Um, what, what are your like favorite lead generation strategies today? Yeah, I, I think because the world has been just hammered so hard with digital ads, I think you will actually stand out if you move towards having more guerrilla marketing doesn't matter if you're a local business and brick and mortar, it could be an online business. Like here's a crazy thought. You own a digital marketing agency and you join your local chamber of commerce in the town you live. Right. And it's like all small business owners, if you service, you know, any type of service-based business, you can shake hands and meet the local HVAC owner and plumber and pool builder. And you got a whole new book of business and it's probably going to be cheaper than you running ads and trying to convince somebody cold off the internet. And so I, I, that might just be because it's, you know, like my background, but I feel like we, when we swing one way as a society, we end up swinging back the other. And I think we're due for a guerrilla marketing kind of swing back in marketing and do like billboards coming back and, you know, print and chamber of commerce and just shaking hands. Cause people are like, I've just been hit with so many ads on digital. I'm just like over it. And I think it's going to feel really good when somebody meets somebody in person and they decide to do business together. Like you just never like that. Why do we still do live events? Like we could all just get on Zoom and Tony Robbins and all these influencers could just Zoom us all in, but they still insist on bringing us together because there's magic in human to human, belly to belly interaction. You just cannot replace that. And so it's like, you can get to a point in digital marketing. I'm a big fan of it. Obviously I run an agency, but I feel like that is something that I'm really pushing people to do to accelerate the results it's like do digital marketing and guerrilla and you don't have to have a brick and mortar you can have an online service that you just sell locally to people in your town by being engaged with your community right so yeah. that, that i would say is a big one i would look at it 2024 and you can control it i can't control if facebook changes their privacy policy i can't control if tiktok gets shut down tomorrow but i can control getting out into my community and engaging with local business owners and grow my business that way. So might be a little old school, might be a little bit more intimidating for the introverts of the world. But um, to me, if you really are on a mission to get your business out into the world, that's how you do it. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I love that too. It's like a off, could, be, could be like an offline to online kind of approach, you know. Yep. And, and yeah. uh, um, you know, which I I, I love that because you know because I'm older, so I. I, you know, when I first started out, you know, we did public speaking and all that kind of stuff. And, um, that's how I made most of my business, you know, it was, was through that, you know, yeah. and then, uh, uh, you know, joining the chamber of commerce and all, 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 all that fun stuff, you know, and, and yeah. making those connections. And now that you, I, uh, think about it, there was a, a web design firm, really small little, you know, like a couple, they, they, you know, the husband and wife. And a couple assistants, but they were they didn't have any online presence at all, and they were just member of like like three neighboring chambers, and they had like well over a hundred clients. You know, like what what most 
small agencies would die for you know and those people stayed with him forever because they were members of the chamber and she was like a little ambassador for the chamber too and you know yep. they, they, they didn't do any online ads anything and they had so many clients just because you know they were from the local community and, there you and, go. and, and, and if that anybody had a problem they can call them yep and 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 that's unfortunately what you know us being lazy marketers just using digital marketing we lost that skill set so i think you can beat your competition because what do you do when everyone's running ads well i can work on perfecting them and try to make them a little five percent ten percent better or i can completely go into a different area where my mark my competition refuses to go and i can blow them out of the water and i can shake hands with all the movers and shakers and guess what? You don't have to do that forever. You can spend a year. You're like, for the next year or two, I'm going all in on my town. Then I'm going to the town next door. Then I'm going to go to the town over there. And I'm going to start to just go out to my whole county. And and so, like, again, that would be how a long-term thinker would, would approach their growth of their business. Right, right on. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you mind me asking you one more question about? No. Uh, go so for the, it. Um, so what do you, what do you, what do you think about like referral strategies? Yes, I I think like a lot of things I talked about today is like catching people at the right state, and so the right state to ask for a referral is when a, someone is on a high with your business. Like you want to catch them, you, like you want to ask for a referral when someone's like past due or they're not happy and they're trying to cancel. Like think about it, right? It's logical, but we don't apply that as to when do when should we you know we know when not to but then we don't apply it to when should we so it's like when do they give you a five star review when do they message you and say thank you this product or service changed my life that's the time right when i'm collecting the before and after from the client and they're on a high i'm like when when is it that you know uh, or who do you know that needs help with their health and fitness goals an example is last year we put a pool in our house and you know we we went through this whole four month process and then my pool builder showed up the date was like done and the, you know like they had to spend a month like letting all the chemical go through the system and so my my kids are going nuts like we want to go in so bad oh my god it's done and we can't go in you're making us wait another month so the day they were able to he just said promise me you know you let me get there before the kids dive in so he got his camera out and then he's like okay kids on three run and do a cannonball for me one two three he jumped the whole time he's doing, I'm like, this is great marketing. This guy's smart. So he, they jump in and he pans around. He, you know, we did an outdoor living barbecue. Then he turned at me and he shook my hand. He said, thanks for the business. Who else do you know that needs a pool and wants to have family memories like this? And I said, he knows marketing because he caught me at a high state-wise. I was like, my kids are in bathing suits. It's a bright summer day. They just did a cannonball. I got steak on the smoker. This is like a, this will be a memory to me that I'll remember forever that's the time. So it's like in my world, when the client achieves the 50 pound weight loss, I ask for the referral. When the client writes on their own volition, a five-star review says, I love this place, message and ask. So it's like, ask them when they're on a high, because now they will go and get it. Otherwise you feel like a nuisance, right? When you just sold somebody and you're like, Hey, can I get a referral? And you're like, I, I haven't even got started, man. And now you're making me go through my phone. Like, so catch them out of high, whatever that means for your product or service. Maybe it's when they unbox the box. Maybe it's when they get the final product. Maybe it's when the job is done, but do it when they're extremely happy. I would say that's the easy formula to remember. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And uh, like what you just said, it reminds me of, you know, like a lot of the, cause I've been in like in a bunch of fitness masterminds and stuff like that over the years. And, uh, how people will will say like you know right, right, right when you close the sale that's when you ask for them and you, you actually go into them and do a three way text and all this kind of stuff you know and and that that's just that's always like seemed like a, um like Pushy. good right you know like well, I don't say sleazy but it's but, but but it's not the right time to do it you know just because they're on the high of joining doesn't mean they're on the high of the results like you're saying it's it's a two different kinds of a high and um, and that's not that is definitely not the right time because you can't you, they can't give you a good referral because they haven't gotten results that, you know, yes. and, and they can't talk about them to their friend you know mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't make sense but yeah so you, you shared some awesome awesome insights um and i re really do appreciate that um is there any like one like big idea or a big thing that people should take away from this episode 
Yeah, I mean, you alluded to it earlier, and I think it's ask for help sooner. Like when I was high on myself and I was opening six gyms in six years, I thought I had it all figured out. And so what I should have been talking to as a single location gym owner is I should have found people with four, six and say, what am I not saying? What are my blind spots? What should I look out for? Because they would have gave me the warning signs. It's the same thing I tell somebody who lost 50 pounds, call somebody who's lost 50 pounds and kept it off for three years and say, how'd you do it? Like call the next version of you and, and hire them. So it's like, whether it's a mentor, whether it's a mastermind, whether it's a book, whether it's a group, get a, get around people just a next step ahead of you and ask for what should I watch out for? What are the minds that I might step on? And that way they can warn you because that's the whole point of mentorship is to help you get to where you need to go quicker. But it, it, it baffles me sometimes when people hire a mentor mastermind and they want to do their own tweak on it. They're like, thanks for the advice, but I'm going to put my own spin on it. Guys, that is your ego. Your ego thinks your version will be better. And my plea to you is to not tweak it. They gave it to you unadulterated advice because it works. And so uh, take it and do it exactly as prescribed. All right. So um, yeah, that would be my big idea. Hire mentors and then don't customize their advice. Like take it at face value, follow it like a good soldier. Yeah, exactly. So it, it has almost be like you, you want your clients to be in the fitness industry, right? Just follow your advice and not hop on YouTube and, and get all these other ideas and try to pick and choose, which is the best. Right. And, 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 and you make a, you know, a, a shit stew basically, you, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I've been Absolutely. guilty of that. You know, so with, 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 when I first went into the masterminds, I did what you said and like picked and choose what I thought would work. And like, oh, that's not. And, you know, that, and there's a whole system that's built and you're paying for that. So, you know, yeah. and uh, like, like you said, so how do people um, follow you, get, get a hold of you, et cetera? Yeah. So I'm, I mean, just look up my name on Facebook or Instagram. It's easy to find Dustin Bogle. Go to my website, DustinBogle.com. And if you are in the fitness world, would love to connect, love to know what kind of business model you run. Some do boot camps, some do small group. So send me a message and I bet I have at least one resource tool or strategy that'll help you grow your business. And uh, if you're not in the fitness industry, hey, that's okay too. Just tell me what industry you're in. And uh, it's just good to connect because I might be able to send somebody your way to help you with your business. That's awesome. Awesome. And we'll be sure to put your links and stuff in the show notes below in the video and audio. So and thank you again for coming on the show. Thanks, Al. Great to be here and uh, appreciate your audience as well. Thank you guys for giving us your time. That concludes this episode of Podcast Marketing Secrets. This is Al Morenton signing off. Hope you have a successful day.